welcome to Let's Just Do This here on Your TV. I'm Margaret Wallace Duffy and I'm here with... Todd Miller. My, Happy to be back here again. Yes, indeed. My co-host. And we're always thrilled to be in studio to educate, empower, and inspire all of you to live well. And we can't do that alone, can we, Todd? Absolutely. The, the best part of the show is the guests. I mean, we're great. Yeah. But, <laughs> we're know, great. The, the guests... And humble. Yes. We are. <laughs> Yes, but the, you're absolutely right. This is all about bringing community to the table to educate and empower and to share stories so we can challenge your beliefs. So I'm really excited to have two familiar faces across the table from us, uh, Mr. Glenn Cunningham and Elizabeth Cunningham, who are the co-founders of Making Our Seniors Matter. Welcome to you both. Thank well, you. We're glad to be here. Now, many of our listeners and viewers have heard about Making Our Seniors Matter because I'm a passionate advocate of this group. I'm a part of this group, but I'm also a passionate advocate of, of really helping to improve the lives of seniors and their families. And so I think it's important for those people at home that may not know what Making Our Seniors Matter is all about. Let's tell the story, if you could, about what is Making Our Seniors Matter and how did it come about? Well, I think it's, uh, it's a story of uh, evolution and change, really, when it comes right down to it. It, it was really just the beginning. Uh, for my real estate business, just helping seniors to make the late in life transitions to whatever that next step would be, whether it be a retirement residence or downsizing. What actually happened though was in the community and we started talking about what we were doing, there was so much support and so much encouragement, uh, it, it just grew. And uh, we now have a, an organization that just over uh, two years ago became uh, incorporated as a nonprofit organization and it's made up of mostly professionals, uh, people who work with seniors who get together to learn more about how to treat them properly, uh, things that can be done, resources that are available, and then we've uh, expanded that through websites and, and uh, uh, things like this, this show and, and podcasts, and I think we're gonna talk about some of the podcasts and how the positive effect of that has been in the community. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, Liz, there's also the other side to this incredible story of evolution of making our seniors matter. There were two wonderful people um, in your past that have sort of sparked the reason that you're so passionate about seniors. And okay, did you bring the Kleenex box? Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. you know, we like to do that here on the show because here's the reality. I know that each and every one of us have our own story and our own journey. But we can all relate to the way things make us feel. And often that why, mm -hmm. why something happens, yeah. really stems from a story. Can you speak to that? Sure, I'll do my best. Um, I think what we've learned is that a lot of the people that join Making Our Seniors Matter have that personal story. They'll come to us and say, well, you know, my mom, my grandma had such an effect in my life. And either they've been through a certain situation that they recognize as part of what we do, or they have a story to tell, a, you know, a memory to share that they think is important, and then they want to honor that memory. So when we first started, um, Glenn and I had mutual loss of our, our moms and Glenn's dad, and we had talked about how do we honor them. And when we first started our meetings, we used to have their photographs right on the front table nice. so that we remembered that that's how it all got started. Mm -hmm. That we wanted, for me personally, it was that I had did not know enough about what was wrong with my mom when she passed away. I didn't know enough and I didn't do enough. And I'm not beating myself up. I'm saying I simply did not know. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of us are in that situation. We don't know what to do. We don't know where to go to get help. We don't know who to speak to. We think somehow this is something that's happening to us and doesn't happen to other people. And that's terribly wrong. So really the learning that we've had is a way for me to share with other people how they can they can help their parents, they can help them with, with anything. We can find the resources that they need, we can support them. And so that I don't ever want anybody to feel that they just couldn't find what they needed yeah. when they want to help their parents. Yeah. And so in honor of ours that are gone and watching over us, we believe that they've guided this along and helped us so. I truly believe that and I have to say personally, when I embarked on this journey with both of you at the very beginning of all of this, mm -hmm. um, my dad was still here. And yes. this uh, month will mark the second year of his passing. And I have to say the instrumental role that the professionals and the people associated with Making Our Seniors Matter um, 
program had made a huge difference in our lives, my mom and I and our family, as mm -hmm. we transitioned through that very difficult time. The resources, the people that were yeah. there to help yeah. support, not just my dad, but myself and my mm -hmm. mom and our extended family, yeah. to really make what was a very difficult time bearable, and then to help us move on in sure. our lives. Because they're a very unique group, Margaret. They're, yeah. they're um, from all over. The different kinds of resources, lawyers and accountants and people who work in residences and caregivers and, and we've had nurses in there. Pharmacists. We, we, and pharmacists. And mm -hmm. we, we even have a couple of seniors who come and represent and let us know when we're off track. Right. Nice. You know, because, and they're very vocal about out. that, yes. Right. They're the, the ones that actually know, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. sure you they know, do. We're, we're they just, if we don't it. take the lead from them, we don't, we don't really have the grasp of, of what the things are mm -hmm. that they need. My story is just a little bit different in that I come from a very blessed family. Um, I have a whole bunch of sisters five. and five. <laughs> <laughs> and and we really went through it rather easily uh, through the through the death of both my mom and dad uh, but and the you know settling of the estate and all that but I ran into so many families where there was nobody around there was chaos within the family there was terrible loss um, and I went wow like What's the difference? How did this work? So same I, idea, I, right? That same you, idea, but just your story was my story yeah. was positive. And the reason I want to say that is because there are other people out there who haven't experienced necessarily the, the negative side. No. And I'm a kind of a uh, glass half full I kind of too. guy, right? Yeah. And so let's make the positive impact of this. And how can we m turn some of these negative, mm -hmm. serious concerns and and Let's bring up, up the little positive. Bit. Well, I'm, up and I'm glad bit. you brought that up, Glenn, because actually our experience wasn't a negative one. It, yeah, it, there no. was just the realities of that roller coaster ride. And what I always loved about the experience in linking arms with making our seniors matter, of which I'm a professional that contributes and helps Absolutely. others in it. But then when the roles were reversed and I was using the resources of that group. And I know you did. I didn't. I absolutely did. I did. But it was feeling that there was somebody there um, to even make things better for us. Uh, you know, fortunately, being in healthcare myself, I knew a lot of how to navigate a lot, and I recognize that that's not common for a lot of people. Mm, not mm. at all. But, well, and that, exactly. That's, but it, they that still was, made it better. I wasn't having a negative experience, gonna say, but it going to say, it doesn't take away from the fact that you're human. Yes, of course. And that it was your dad. Absolutely. Which is a total and different situation. And you need the space and the time mm -hmm. to grieve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to be a daughter. And, exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. It, just when you were talking about the resources, uh, as Liz said, I have five sisters. Four of them lived within 10 minutes of my, of nice. my parents. And they were all very active in a small community. You live in a small community, Todd, so you know what that's like. So we didn't go through the struggles of who do I call? My sisters mm -hmm. would say, oh, I'll just phone so-and-so right. yeah. because they knew they them personally. They yeah, were connected, exactly. yeah. When you don't have that, and I think even more in the big city, everything is just so much more distant, mm -hmm. right? Right. And, and it, what, what we love about our resources too, they're, they're like you, Margaret, they're people we know and people we trust. Right. And our thing since we've started is, and because of our parents, our question is always when we meet someone new who's interested in the group, would I send my mom to them? Right. Would I ask them to care for Glenn's dad? Right. And if the answer is yes, they're a perfect fit. And if the answer is no, there's lots of groups, this might not be the right one for you. Indeed. And that's really, it's about that heart, that connection that makes a difference that I could send my mom to you if so I could. So that person may have a lot of upside in, in absolutely, many ways, but then absolutely. there's, but that there's one just critical, some, yeah. just that little something. You have to know, like, and trust. My right? mom yeah. would love a massage from Margaret. I don't think she ever had a massage in her life, and wow. she would have loved that. Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm so excited that you've shared the story of Making Our Seniors Matter, and it's, it's grown in leaps and bounds and is doing some pretty incredible things. I'm mm -hmm. so excited to be part of that. So we're going to take a quick break here in a minute, and we're going to come back and talk about what's in store moving forward with Making Our Seniors Matter, some pretty amazing initiatives, stuff that you can get involved in, mm -hmm. both as a person and as a business, because it is about linking those two yes, together. So stay so. tuned, because we've got more great, engaging discussion here on Let's Just Do This. Welcome back to Let's Just Do This. I'm Todd Miller, along with Margaret Wallace Duffy, and our incredible guests, Glenn Cunningham and Elizabeth Cunningham from Making Our Seniors Matter. I have been fortunate to work with both of you and Margaret over the years with Making Our Seniors Matter and various things that you guys have cooked up. Uh, the latest, which is Senior Speak, which when you first told me about it, I thought, what a fantastic idea. And it is a podcast 
by seniors for seniors. That's now right. we've done podcasts in the past where yep. we've hosted and we've interviewed seniors and it's been fantastic, mm -hmm. but this is a little different. A little different. Why is it different? Well, I guess uh, I can share the fact that when we did podcasts together, we would come up with the ideas. We'd come up with the questions uh, and the guests. And this is all about seniors choosing their own topics, choosing their own questions, and choosing to talk to each other, not us. So we didn't get to talk to Todd this time at all. Um, so they, made, they decided what they wanted to speak on, and then they came in and spoke. And we have a huge variety of topics that, that we talked about. Um, we've done three podcasts, in, one in Cal uh, Caledon, one in Brampton, one in Mississauga, so that we've got a collection of people from our community. And we're hoping to see that expand because Absolutely. this wouldn't have been possible without the incredible generous oh. funding mm -hmm. uh, by the Minister of Seniors Affairs, Ministry of Senior Affairs in the Ontario government. government. Yes. And this is a bit of a pilot and it has been so much fun and watching the seniors and empowering the seniors um, yeah. and the grant money has really gone, been put to great use. It's been good. Uh, and we're hoping to see that expand because not only have we learned, or at least uh, you and I have talked about this, Todd, we've learned from listening to these senior stories and sharing their extensive experience. Mm -hmm. But I think the seniors too have learned. I, well, I mean, that was part of the podcast There's, goal. That was part of the yeah. requirement yeah. that, yeah. that what it we was wanted to do is what's, what's in it for them, so to speak. You know, and we've seen it, Todd. I mean, we've seen some people who have come back from retirement into doing the podcast that, that we're broadcasting themselves and and after you know 25 years of retirement and you could see the glow right i mean it was just they were excited mm -hmm. about yeah. doing then the, the other side where liz has spoken to people and they said oh no no i don't think i can do that yeah. by the time she got finished and just said just tell that story that's <laughs> that's really really moving and and exciting and and you've seen the excitement on them i mean it was really neat because we would have them there uh kind of one after the other, but they would hang around yes. because they got <laughs> yeah. engaged and they got they wanted involved. To see right? what they wanted to see what else was, was talking going about. On. That's right. And the stories they went from it. from funny to I wouldn't call them tragic, but you know, life and death situations. Mm -hmm. And then there were also the heartbreaking ones where there yeah. was love and loss. I yeah, it was, it was incredibly well. Every, everything from starting a ninety-three year old uh, lady's day with a, an ounce of scotch. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah. An ounce of scotch. That, that was that was the good one. <laughs> a really hot shower and a really cold shower, and that's how she starts her day. That's before breakfast. Yep. To um, a little bit of a heartbreak story, I guess, where um, the sweetheart and spouse of a, an elderly lady who is now in long-term care. Um, his story of how he struggles every day, how he feels committed to be with her because that's what she needs and wants and wants and begs him to be there every day. And his own health is now in danger as to whether he can manage to and do these that. Are real and these stories. are real stories. These are oh, true. Real other deal. People are Today is to. a day he'll have to decide whether he's going to see her or not. But and the pain of leaving and the pain of going and The seeing. most amazing thing I found about that story was when you told me about him that he wasn't sure if he could do the podcast. No, he wasn't. And he did. Yeah. And what an impact oh. it was, that's going to have was amazing. on other people in the same situation. He was so that he brave, took the time don't you think? To he share was so brave. He was brave. This is going to make yeah. someone else feel less alone. There's other mm -hmm. people in the same situation. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. We cocoon. We live in mm -hmm. our little worlds. And we're so unaware of other people in the same situation. Yeah. And when the room was in tears, and I was one of them, as he shared, because he broke down, rightfully so, he mm -hmm. shared so authentically and, mm -hmm. and with such love for his wife. And you could just feel you the could hurt. Feel a, but the hurt and, you, could, you could feel the love, You too. could yeah. feel the love and yeah. the hope yeah. still. Because he yeah. talked about his, his kids and how they're mm -hmm. so supportive. And we're all crying. And when he looked up, he apologized to all of us. Oh, I'm I sorry know. for making you cry. Bless when, him. in fact, we all looked at one another and said, well, wait a minute. No, thank you mm -hmm. for having Absolutely. the courage to share because Absolutely. someone at home is going to hear this. And that's what seniors speak mm -hmm. was entire. That's that what was it was about. Goal. But it was also about other things. It was about uh, traveling on the first opportunity to go through the Northwest Passage of Canada. Yes. And to very, meet, very to meet vividly with vividly de described as well. You could just yeah. see what you the You could story. almost feel the story, yeah. couldn't you? Yeah. With escaping, the water. Escaping, escaping from a but country. But to our own country. Yeah. Yeah, how fabulous to meet the Inuit people and, yeah. and yes. have a chance to interact and engage and see and, you know, how they are. I think the opportunity, too, to see, um, we all know our seniors gave us this world and the communities that we live in. They worked hard. They sacrificed. Um, they held up their end for sure, and we owe them now. But the resources that are there. 
You know, these are CEOs, these are workers, these are people who've had lives, extensive lives, tons of experience, and they come to the end of it, and then they go, well, now what? What do we do with it now? What do we do with the knowledge? What do we do with the experience? And this platform. And they want to share. Yes. And this they platform want to teach gave us. them that opportunity yes. to share yes. and to help empower themselves yep. while empowering and inspiring others. Yeah. Well, one of the other things, we had a couple of, probably three or four people in their story about coming to Canada. Yep. Yes. <clears throat> and it, it's good for some of the younger people maybe to hear these stories yeah. and how grateful these folks are to about be being, Canadian. In Cana yeah. being in Canada and being yeah. calling themselves Canadians. I think, I mean, I have to be honest. I, you know, multi or not multi generation. What do you? Yep, I've come in, in for several generations, so I'm not mm -hmm. sure I appreciate understand it and appreciate yeah. it just quite Certainly as much as somebody else. Don't understand Juliet's story of of being under the uh, terrible oppression of Idi Amin in Uganda. Yeah. And then having to struggle, being told you have a few days to get out. Yes with your two beautiful little children and your husband. Four suitcases, that's and all four suitcases and, and, dollars. Dollars. <laughs> and a hundred bucks. And your life is in danger and the plane is sitting there and someone with a bayonet is going through your suitcase to see if there's anything they can steal from you. Yeah. And at that moment in time, you could make it or not make it. And she I, made I it. I think you're giving away all the stories here. No, that's I'm not. Just, <laughs> you have to, you have to, get, the you have to get the rest of it. You have to get the rest of it. And of course, uh, once again, it's because of government funding that that oh, was able to happen. Yeah, and we we're grateful that. for that and, and really look forward to potentially doing more of that. Mm -hmm. But Making Our Seniors Matter does so much more than that. We've talked about all the resources that, that, the, that uh, the group has, but there's also really another really exciting event coming up this spring. And it's the second time that mm -hmm. this incredible person has come uh, to Canada mm -hmm. and to Ontario through Making Our Seniors Matter. I had the pleasure of attending the last one and I will be there not only as a Making Our Seniors Matter um, member, but also as a participant in the workshop because I learned so much yeah. from the woman named Tipa Snow. Liz, could you please speak about who is Tipa Snow and why are you bringing her back in April? Because she's awesome. She is. <laughs> but everybody at home may not know who she is and what she does, so let's talk yep. about what she's coming. So to, Tipa how, Snow how to brings 30 plus years of experience as a caregiver for folks with dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, through that experience, she's developed a program called A Positive Approach, which shares with other caregivers, both family and professionals, how to use her system of managing, uh, and that's what it comes down to. Um, never argue with someone who, with Alzheimer's who says the sky is green. You right. say, sure it is today, you know, it's green today. Little things like that that we learned that you can avoid a lot of stress by not arguing. Um, how to position yourself physically to move someone from A to B. And so we were blessed last time that she came to have uh, first responders in our audience who have to as a police officer have to ask somebody to leave a house or an ambulance uh, paramedic that has to ask somebody to get into an ambulance. If they're combative and they're, they're angry, they choose not to go, it can be very difficult. But if you know some of the tricks and you can identify where somebody is in this illness, you can really support them and help them move along and, and help them in their lives in, in residence or at home. And, and she just brings the practice. She's funny. Yes, yeah, she sure she is. She is hilarious. She sure is. And she will tell you that that's how she teaches. Because when we laugh, we learn. And that's how she explains how she teaches. And we, we learn so much about what you can do. And it is uh, an illness with an inevitable end. There is no positivity about the end. But, but the manner in which you can live and be helpful is wonderful. Is, is this for professionals? Is it for? Good uh, question. Just general population? Last, the last time when she was up a year and a half ago, we had a morning session for professionals and the afternoon was for, for the actual family. Mm -hmm. Or caregivers. Informal caregiver, caregiver right? Mm -hmm. This time we've chosen to do it, for the most part, for professionals. Of course, family people are, are mm -hmm. welcome. We never turn anybody <laughs> away. But um, our, our thinking behind that was that if we can help 300 plus professionals who are going to help Hundreds of or, many or more even people. if you think of tens yeah. of people, yes. we've got a great wide expanse that we're actually helping. I mean, we want to help the families, of course, but yeah. maybe we can do it in, in, a, in a second level as well and, and yeah. reach actually more people. Uh, Making Our Seniors Matter is, is a resource for the seniors, but also promote the education and training 
of the professionals. So by educating the, the professionals, we're helping yep. the resource for the seniors and as we well. we do have tickets so we, available. Yes. And you can go to our website, makingourseniorsmatter.com, and get the tickets there, and you'll find out more information. Yeah, I It's a full-day program. And it, the date is April the April the 16th. 16th. Uh, lunch is included. It's yes. going to wow. be a wonderful day. Absolutely. So, so that's something to, to So yes, if you're time. interested, uh, get in touch with us and sign up. And another looking forward even into the fall, <laughs> which is hard to believe we're already looking that far ahead. It's a long but, ways away, yes. It's summer. Have to <laughs> it is past the, It's these, past boating season time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we know the work that goes into creating these types time. of events, yes. and therefore we want to get the word out so yes. that you can mark mm -hmm. your calendars. And that is um, an event about housing uh, mm -hmm. for seniors. Yes. And this is a real struggle, yeah. not just for seniors, but for families as people start to transition in their lives. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to what that event is like in, in September, what people yeah. can expect so that they can perhaps, if they're interested, keep it on the radar? I can start it off a little bit by saying it's an expo. Uh, we'll have approximately 70 booths there with people to inform, educate, and share information. And we are at Chinkusi Curling Club in Brampton. We'll be there for a full day. And the idea is to share all of the housing options that we can possibly bring on under one roof. Fabulous. So that people can know. And that's everything from sharing your house to uh, living independently. So aging in place is the quote that a lot of people use. How can you safely stay in the home that you choose to be in? And aging in place doesn't mean staying in that home particularly, but is there another place that might be uh, more advantageous for you to be in? And we'll have as many options as we can pull together. So if anybody out there has options, we are thrilled to hear from them in regard think, to the event. I think that's one of the things. We're working with um, one of the, the people that will be presenting is CMHC, the Canadian Morgan House, Mortgage and Housing Corporation. <coughs> Pardon me. And they have some programs on housing options. So how kind of we decided that this was a really exciting thing to do is because I'm, I'm in real estate and we have an interest in that. But what we found out is kind of inadvertently was how, how many people are actually out there going, I don't know what's out there. What and and what's how my easy it is for young people to move up and up and up. But when you get to that retirement age and you want to look at the future and we're in the bigger home and do we need to stay here, well, what are the options? Right. And, and one of the questions, I mean, we've had seminars just within the community and, and the questions you get. What do I do with all my stuff? What do I do with all my stuff? <laughs> but, yeah. but where do I go? And, yeah. and, and what exactly is a condominium? And what mm -hmm. exactly is shared housing? And what exactly is adult lifestyle communities? A lot of misunderstanding. And, and this is why we thought, let's put it all under one roof. Uh, I think we've all heard these stories about co-housing lately with mm -hmm. yes. you know uh, uh, older mm -hmm. Canadians getting together and, and sharing homes is Absolutely. one of the big and ones sharing yeah. a place well, together yeah. you know, so that there's an option you don't need to leave your house and mm -hmm. and that's the thing it's an option it's yep. not the answer yep. it's yeah. An yeah. option. And, and we're hoping and to have speakers there that day, Margaret, as awesome. well. Awesome, and that's in September. Yes. And that will yes. be on makingourseniorsmatter.com yes, as well. And, it's there and, now. And I do want to speak about that just quickly because many of our listeners, both um, for your TV across Ontario and on iTunes and SoundCloud where they can all listen and follow us, are from all across Canada. So what I'm hoping to do, <laughs> I'm putting it out there, that when we're there, I mean, you will welcome people from other communities to oh, that expo. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yes, and absolutely. And we might even do some live hits um, through social media to share some fun. education from, you know, let's just do this, let's share some education um, so that if you can't make it to the expo, you can at least be educated from mm -hmm. afar. That's what technology can do. And then, of course, if you want more information and want to connect with Making Our Seniors Matter in your community, perhaps to hold an expo like this one in their community, that's a possibility. Absolutely. What I'd, I'd like, like to take the opportunity here just to say if you're a developer, if you're, if you're building condos, if you're building uh, adult lifestyle communities, or in some of these outlying communities that just have good bungalows and townhomes and that kind of thing. Let us know. Let us know. Yeah. Talk to us. We're looking for that kind of, of uh, experience partnerships and, and yeah, partnerships sure. to put out there for that. That mm -hmm. is what this is all about. We've got home shows and they're good. We've got the Zoomer show. All of these are good shows, but we want this to be housing specific. and lifestyle mm -hmm. options for the people who are retiring and, and late in life. Fantastic. Well, you know, it's always fun to sit across with Liz and Glenn because not only do we have a lot of laughs. We get going, don't we? <laughs> yeah. But, but we always learn also, something. We do learn something. And what I also love about um, both of you is that 
you're leading Making Our Seniors Matter as the co-founders with a true passion for making seniors' lives better. But what I love about both of you is that you're willing to also challenge yourselves to try different things that you've never done before. Yeah. <laughs> because showing others that they too have the ability to do that. Absolutely. Oh, yes, absolutely. And yeah. so taking risks and trying things you've never done and failing forward and getting up and doing it again, I've witnessed over the past three years all of that. And I just want to say how proud I am of both of you and watching and how honored I am to be Thank linking you. arms with you and cannot wait to see past September what's in store for making our seniors matter because I know we that don't know yet. We, we, we don't know the same way. We can't wait to see it either. But what I do know that across Canada and, and in fact globally, this is a real issue for everyone. Yes. This aging population deserves mm -hmm. to live well mm -hmm. until they don't. Mm -hmm. And uh, with groups like this, we can really make an impact. And I don't know, Todd, I, I'm sure you will agree with me. We're so proud at Let's Just Do This to be able to have, be a platform to allow you to share your message across our great country so that we together can be better for our seniors and their families. And, we, and, and we tell folks to come onto our website and have a look at the muffs. Oh, the muffs, yeah. The we've buffs. only got a quick 30 seconds. No, so if you I just want people no, to know that they're there. So cool. What are they? Alzheimer twiddle muffs are yes. for people with Alzheimer's and uh, later onset dementia. Uh, and they're a real muff. You put your hands inside, and we have a group of volunteers at North Bramley United Church who are knitting them, and then we're providing them to the hospitals and long-term cares. And thank you so much and for And it's great for kids that. with autism as well. Yes, so it is. So it yes, helps it is. to keep them from fidgeting yeah. and really makes a big difference. So as always, sharing <laughs> great <you>. stories <laughs> and education and hopes for the future here on Let's Just Do This. On behalf of Todd Miller and myself and the entire team here at Your TV, thanks for joining us. Thank I you. hope that you'll share what you've heard here today and perhaps you'll be sitting across next, from, across from us on one of the upcoming shows. Come on we on. wanna hear from you. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And until next time, be well.